composed between 1909 and 1910 by Russian composer Alexander Skryabin, Prometheus, the Poem of Fire, is an ambitious orchestral work, not only because of its innovative content and harmonic language, but also because it is one of the first pieces in music history with evident multimedia thinking in modern sense. With a duration of approximately 20 minutes, the piece is scored for a piano, a large orchestra, an optional choir and the chromola, or a color organ, a new device invented by Preston Miller to represent sound and visually accompany music. The instrument was somewhat similar to the one developed in 1893 by the British painter Alexander Wallace Remington. The narrative of the piece is loosely based on an ancient story of Prometheus, a titan in Greek mythology who is credited with the creation of humanity from clay and is described in Hesiod's Theogony as a challenger to the mighty Zeus. Prometheus played a trick against the Olympian god by placing two sacrificial offerings before him, beef meat hidden inside an ox's stomach and the bull's bones wrapped in fat. Zeus wrongly chose the latter, which meant the humans would from now on keep the meat for themselves and burn the bones and fat as an offering to the gods. Angered Zeus hid the fire from humans in revenge, but Prometheus stole the fire on a fennel stalk and gave it to humanity. To punish Prometheus for his crimes, Zeus chained him to the cliff and sent an eagle to eat his immortal liver day after day, which would then grow back every night. The myth of Prometheus symbolizes the rise of humanity over animals by the use of fire, and the fire itself symbolizes the rise of civilization. Other composers before Scriabin were also inspired by the myth, such as Franz Liszt, who composed a symphonic poem of the same name. Ludwig van Beethoven composed the ballet in which Prometheus finds humanity in the state of ignorance and decides to introduce the ideas of arts and science to them. Scriabin, on the other hand, was highly influenced by symbolist movement in visual arts, as well as theosophical philosophy of the time. His interest in theosophy can be traced to early 1905, when he encountered the book by Helena Blavatsky, The Key to Theosophy, during his visit to Paris. He described the book as remarkable and close to his own way of thinking. There are even indications that he may have been enrolled into formal membership of a Belgian branch of theosophical society. Blavatsky's concepts were occult in nature, and she supported the anti-Christian thought of Western esotericism at the time, the one based on the idea of an ancient occult science that has been forgotten and should be revived. In her book The Secret Doctrine, Blavatsky used the Greek myth of Prometheus to illustrate the duality between good and evil. She associated the tortured titan with Jesus, who as a son of God also suffered for humankind's benefit. Even more than that, Blavatsky pointed out the parallels between Prometheus and Lucifer, the fallen angel of light. In his program notes on Prometheus for the performance in 1998, Royal Brown writes, In a world increasingly dominated by industrialism and materialism, Scrabin sought a liberation from the time and space of the present that would ultimately allow him and others oneness with the cosmos, its rhythm and its mysteries. The means by which Scrabin hoped to accomplish this was music. The composer, who early on was influenced by Friedrich Nietzsche, saw himself as nothing less than a god who, through his art, would not just reveal the cosmos to his listeners, but in fact allow them access to it. Scrabin's aesthetics were partially based on 19th century theory of synesthesia, a theory which proposed the relationship between different sensorial elements of a single artwork. He conceptualized his Prometheus as a symphony of light and sound, but the light aspects remained somewhat vague and unperformable due to technological disadvantages at the time. Scrabin notated the part for colored lights in the score on a separate musical stuff that he named Luce, and later added a detailed written description of how it should be used. The very first performance of Prometheus took place on March 2, 1911, in Moscow, under the baton of Sergei Kusevitsky with Scrabin himself at the piano. On March 21, 1915, it was first performed with colored lightning by the Russian Symphony Orchestra with Marguerite Volovy on piano, conducted by Modest Altschuler at Carnegie Hall in New York. For the Moscow premiere, Scrabin collaborated with the technician Alexander Moser to create an electric color keyboard for the accompanying light show. 
According to the musicologist and friend Leonid Savanyev, the composer ultimately decided to withdraw the instrument from the performance due to technical difficulties. Two years later, in 1913, Scrabin made notes for lights in the first edition of the score. This publication, also known as the Parisian score, contains the only table of color-to-tone correspondences coming directly from the composer. Scrabin also indicated a level of spectacle beyond the possibilities of Mozart's keyboard, such as changes of light intensity and special effects of lightning, fireworks and sparks. Such a coordination of musical performance and light effects would have been impossible in 1913. The annotated light show therefore existed in Scrabin's imagination only, freed from the practicality of an actual performance. Scrabin's color system is ordered by the circle of fifths, in which the colors are ascribed to tones to show the relationship with the visible spectrum of electromagnetic radiation. It has been argued that Scrabin's color associations were influenced by his theosophic readings and based on Isaac Newton's treatise on optics. A musicologist, Danuta Mirka, explains the association between light and music in her 1996 article. The part of the color organ, or luce, is divided into two voices, a slow and a fast moving one. The fast one outlines the root of the chord being played by the orchestra, whereas the slower one the esoteric meaning behind it, related directly to theosophical doctrine. The role of synesthesia in Prometheus is, therefore, both constructive and informative, with perception of performance space being included as an integral part of the musical composition. The music of Prometheus is mostly based on various inversions and transpositions of Scrabin's notorious sonority, referred by Savanyev as a chord of Prometheus, also known as mystic chord, with the following pitches in his presentation. C, F sharp, B flat, E, A and D. Scrabin himself called it the chord of the pleroma, with pleroma literally meaning fullness in Greek. It refers generally to the totality of divine powers in theological contexts. Scrabin built the harmonic structure from the intervals of fourths, be it perfect, augmented or diminished, rather than thirds as it is the case in traditional harmony. The chord can be also seen as the composite of higher harmonics from 8th to 14th with the exception of 12th, giving it a rather bright sonic impression. The chord is also interpreted as a synthetic chord because it includes all four basic triads – major, minor, augmented and diminished. In contrast to the persistent dissonance throughout piece, Prometheus ends with a bright F-sharp major triad, which happens to be the only consonant sonority in the entire composition. in Prometheus sings a single word repeated three times, which scholars originally assumed as arbitrary nonsense, or they have tried to relate it to Arthur Rambo's poem Vowels. However, a musicologist Marina Labanova identifies Scrabin's text with a mantra invoking eternal living unity which appears in the secret doctrine by Blavatsky. Labanova's interpretation thus fits the narrative and formal logic of the piece. Musicologist Boris Schlözer, in 1923, pointed out that Scrabin hoped to create ritualized performances which would remove the barriers between performers and spectators. Such attempts were likely influenced by symbolist theories of the theater, as well as Nietzsche's early work The Birth of Tragedy. Nietzsche theorized that the chorus in ancient Greek drama served not only a role of a performer, but also a commentator and mediator between actors and audience. This became even more evident in what was to become Scrabin's magnum opus, Mysterium, an unfinished spectacle with which Scrabin aimed to arouse all five basic senses. Like the Mysterium, Prometheus was not only a sound and light show, but rather a work of art that sought to change the world as it is. The Promethean Enlightenment would therefore allow humankind to transcend its basic and limited material existence towards higher spiritual reunification. Scrabin's friend, a poet, Vyacheslav Ivanov, described symbolism as an art that turns the perceiver into a participant in the creative act and that true artworks arise from a mutual collaboration between artists and audience. 
in their text Scrubbin and the Possible, Anna Goboy and Justin Towson write. In Prometheus, Scrubbin's generations of realizers can become his ideal receivers, collaborating with him across the decades to produce more and more spectacular versions of his impossible work. Prometheus embeds a particularly modernist paradox. It was a vision of the future, so only in the future can an authentic production be realized. A statement perhaps as true today as it was a century ago.